Hey guys, welcome back. Let's go over a few things today. I'm going to be visiting the NIST website because I think it's the best, best source of information without all the certifications. And that may sound so weird, right? The best information that you can study, read, absorb, comprehend, and you don't get any type of certification or acknowledgement that you even know this stuff. You either you know it or you don't. So let's get into it a little deeper today in regards to the NIST publication. And this is the website that I have right now. Let's do this right now. So let's expand this up a little bit more because I'm getting old. So right here on the NIST publication website, you can see that there is tons and tons of information just cybersecurity alone has over 1400 documentations on how to process and understand and uh and just learn the material because this is what a lot of organizations live by because it's easier to follow rule books and items and documents that are handed down to you by the government than it is to make up your own like are you going to hire someone to just make out this framework for you well meanwhile it already exists so let's dive a little deeper i am studying one in particular i want to go over some of the details of it i enjoy it i love it it's dry as hell it's boring trust me it is but i'm guaranteeing you that information like this that you learn and absorb will kind of net you some pretty good salaries out in the real world so let's uh, go into a little deeper of course, it comes in many different languages. Well, that's a good thing because obviously not everyone is a native English speaker. And that what's better, right? Because uh, it's internationally known. Um, let's go over, let's take a quick look, right? So we're in cybersecurity and we have the NIST publication and let's go over here to title author I, now authors i'm not too sure i mean there's there's tons of authors I, I don't know anyone in particular there is handbooks so let's take a quick look at the handbooks uh you can actually look up specific uh report numbers and wow look at this uh cryptography uh cryptographic and security testing and I'm going to show you guys the one that I'm I'm more interested in right now. And, and it, it's pretty damn good in, in regards of understanding the whole incident response stuff. And that is right here. The uh, security computer security incident handling guide, which is the special publication 800-61. I know you guys are probably watching this video and be like, damn, this is boring. He's like showing us black and white text on a screen. I'm like, yeah, but this is what will get you your six figures like hands down no questions asked i wanted to go over i'm not going to go every single page i just want to go over some of the details yeah they have the table of contents makes a total sense and i i went through this a high level uh here is like a there's diagram there's colored diagrams to actually uh, not just for you to sit there and read black and white text, but there is another diagram I want to show you guys uh, handling and incident. So they basically show you the whole range of things that you're supposed to be doing, right? The preparation, detection, analysis, containment, eradication and recovery, and then the post incident activity. So they actually go through each one of these to so you can understand when you're in that phase, what you're supposed to be doing, which is great, right? Because it's it's so much easier to absorb and understand and digest this stuff. Like right now we're in the detection and analysis and it goes through the very fine details of what you should be doing, right? It, it, and, I, and I think this is the best way for anyone to understand incident handling at its finest, right? It's 79 pages, you can go through this, and then it once you complete that phase of it, it goes into the second phase and it identifies it so vividly that you can't miss it, right? So you're scrolling down, let's just say, and then now you're in the containment, eradication, and recovery phase. And again, that process repeats. You go through the entire phase uh, and, and you understand it. You read the details of it, what you should be doing at this part in time if you were to encounter an incident that you're experiencing in the real world or whether it's in your test lab or whatever it is, right? And you're going through all that 
great resource of information. I feel like this is something that all blue teamers should read and understand because you know the NIST publication is a highly and uh, reputable source of information. It's not like oh you know this is just another vendor trying to sell you something. This is no vendor selling you anything. I mean this is the government trying to tell everyone this is how you should be handling a situation. Um, and I, I thought this was a great read. And this is something that I would definitely revisit many, many times over because there's certain times where you may miss something and you come back and be like, oh yeah, that's right, I should have. But the best part of all of this, right? The best part is not the diagrams or all that, not uh, all the documents and all the details of what you should be doing. The fact that they actually have an incident handling checklist that you can print out and go against every single time this checklist does not change, right? It, it just keeps on uh, retaining its value. So you just have to print this out or have it somewhere digitally. And if you run into a situation where you're going against an incident and you're trying to determine if it's legitimate or you know if it's a false positive, you just have to go through this checklist, which is awesome, right? I, I think the fact that they have this here for you all you know in this one piece of document for someone like a very specialized blue team that does this type of job it's amazing so in regards to all that and I've, like always i want to just point out that you know jobs currently there are people are still hiring i know you're probably seeing on youtube a lot of people posting videos about them losing their tech jobs or it jobs or whatever the case is i assure you that as many people that are getting fired, there are just as many people still getting hired for IT and cybersecurity jobs. So don't let that deter you away from putting efforts into your studies, right? I know there's a fine line between continuing your studies, mastering that, and still trying to look for something to utilize all the experience that you just put in to understanding and passing a certification. So. Just want to put that out there but if we take the same uh verbiage from this instant handling guide right uh and that's where the this cert comes in right here because on linkedin we type in cert this is where it gets you instant response there's a lot of positions that are open right now in the united states i have a cert now this is just on linkedin there's 857 some organizations some companies may categorize it a little differently so it may not come up as a cert responder or whatever it is so you got here marvel technologies it's a manager for a cyber incident response i understand we're not looking for managers we possibly would be looking for entry level and again entry level may be a little deceiving sometimes because they want like four or five years of experience and you don't always have that as a beginner right but you really have to dive deeper into the job description of these. But what one thing I would say is understand that portion of it if you're trying to get into this particular niche of cybersecurity, which is incident handling. Understand in this publication, the document that I literally just showed you prior to this, and then apply for these jobs. But making sure that on your resume that you have those key terms that you're identifying uh, you know, these incident response terminology in your resume or, you know, even setting up personal labs. You may not have the experience yet to label all that information under an experience or a, a big company that you used to work for and say, hey, I used to do incident response and these are the activities that I did post incidents, right? For example, like we're using the verbiage in here, um, attack ho attacking host, you know, like the key bold words that you see in this document. Is something that you would probably want to utilize in your resume and then of course we're not lying right we we were putting things that you actually know but we're putting it in the way where it stands out enough to show the person looking at your resume that you know this stuff and this is why you're applying for this particular job and again this is why you're applying for these cert positions now I would say take that approach and see how that works for you because it does take a little bit of you know patience on reading NIST publications. It's not the the most entertaining, uh, you know, 
read of all time, but it, it is interesting for people who are intrigued with cybersecurity incident handling. And this is the field that you're getting into. And I assure you that, you know, doctors, lawyers, or whoever else did not read text in the book and say, wow, this is so amazing. Maybe some, but uh, I can assure you that when I did it, it was like, wow, did people actually find this interesting? Or did they find that if they do this now, they don't have to do it later, but they'll be well off later, right? Same goes for incident handling and reading, understanding, absorbing, and mastering the NIST publication and taking that onto the next level by applying to jobs and landing that job and then making yourself even better going forward. So I want to leave it at that. I thank you guys for hitting that like, comment, and subscribe. And I hopefully you appreciate this video because it's all coming from, all right? I want to thank you all now. See you guys again later. Take care.